Welcome back aliens, my name is Avin Reddy and in this video we'll try to print Fibonacci series in Python. But what is Fibonacci series? Now the number which you can see here, this is a Fibonacci series. But can you find a pattern here? Of course, right? if you want to print something in programming, there should be some pattern. So you can pause the video, guess the pattern and then I will let you know what is the exact pattern here. So if you see the first number, second number, which is zero and one. Now if you add them, you will get one, which is the next number. Then the second number and third number, which is one, one will make it two. And that's the fourth number. Then we have one and two. If you add them, you will get three. So that's what you have to do. You have to add two numbers so to get the next number. So basically you have to add the second last number and the last number to get the next number. Right. And that's how you can build a Fibonacci series. Of course, there's a there's a use of this in mathematical world in the real world, of course. But here we are not concerned about that logic. We are concerned about how can you print this one in Python. So let's do it. Now, of course, first of all, you want to print. So just to make it simple, what I will do is I will call a function name as fib. And in this fib, I want to specify. So, you know, you can also mention till what point you want it. I mean, how many numbers you want? Top five Fibonacci or first 10, first 15. So at this point, let's go first five. Let's print them. Now, unfortunately, we don't have this function in build. So we have to build this function by ourselves. And the way you can build functions in Python is very simple. You say def. Uh, let's mention the function name as fib itself. We'll give a bracket here and we have to accept that number. And let's accept that in n because that makes sense, right? Okay, let's define this function. So what you want to do here? Now, if you can see the code, we first we want to print zero. So let's do that quickly. So let's print zero and then let's print one. So we are printing zero and then we are printing one. That's what we want, right? And after that, we can print one, two, three, four. But at this point, let's run this code. Now, if you can see on the right hand side, we also have a console where you can see the output. So let's run this code and you can see we got zero, one. So that step is done. Now, if you are thinking I will be printing one, then two, then three, then five, we can do that. But then at how many numbers I can do that? Maybe I can do it for 50, top five. I mean, first 50, first 100. It should be automated, right? It should be done by computer. And that's where you want to repeat these steps, right? You want to add and you have to repeat. And in programming, if you want to repeat something, we have seen how to do that. That's right, you can use a loop here. So what I will do is instead of having that in uh, zero and one directly, we can use two variables. I can say A will hold zero and B will hold one. And here, instead of having zero one, we can print A and we can print B. It's that simple. But now I also want to print the next number, right? So after printing 0, 1, I want to print next, next number. And that too should be repeated. And to repeat something, we use a loop, right? And famous one we all love, which is for loop. So let's use for here. We'll say for i, that's the counter we normally use. For i in, and we have to use a range now. Uh, so I will say range. Now, since I'm printing the first two numbers, so we don't have to start the range from 0. Let's start the range from 2 because the first and second is done. Uh, so let's start with two and then I want to go till n, right? Because that's how many numbers we want to print. In fact, you know, you should be going with three because first and second number is printed. We have to go from three. But unfortunately, when you say n here, n simply means, so if you say 10, it will, it will take nine. So if you start from two, you know, instead of three, you can actually go from nine. It will be around 10 numbers. Okay. Now, once you got that loop, you want to print the next number. It's actually very simple. You can simply print the next number by saying a plus b. Don't you think our job is done here? If you run this code, you will get the output. It's one of the easiest. Let's try first. Oh, okay, it's not working. Okay, something went wrong here. You can see the moment you say a plus b, uh, we got one, but we are not getting the next number. Because every time you add, you will simply add zero and one. You don't want that. So what you do is initially when you say zero, one, that is a and b, for the next iteration, what if you shift these numbers? What if you shift A and B? Now what will happen is the new A and B will be 1, 1. Once you add them, then again you have to shift. So it will be new A and B would be 1 and 2. That's what we want, right? Okay, so how do we do that? And for that, we have to use the third variable, right? Which is C in this case. Uh, so let's use C and we'll say C is equal to A plus B. Initially, that's what we want. And then once we add the value of A and B, which is didn't see, let's swap, okay? So how do we swap? So we'll say A is equal to B, and then we'll say B is equal to C. So that's how you shift. Now, once you got shifted, we got new values for A and B. 
we can simply okay well, let's print c in the next iteration you will add the new values and that will go in c and then this will be continued i hope this will work now so let's run this code and yes it worked so you can see we got first five fibonacci numbers okay let me just reduce the number of lines here we don't want extra spaces so this is awesome right in fact you can ask for this value of five from the user so you can say hey user enter number so whatever number is entered by the user you can pass it here and then you can pass the same number in the fibonacci in the fib function and it will do the calculation for you okay but we have a twist here what if someone says hey i want the first number that's it <laughs> in this case also you can see we got two values we wanted one but we got two values so in this case also we can apply some if conditions uh, so you can say if you know before printing a and b you can say if if the number is equal to equal to one in this case only print a so we'll print a right uh, so this part the next part should be done in the else and then we can give a tab here so that's how you can do so if your number is one you can print only one and you can see this works you will get only zero uh, if you say you want two it of course it will print two so you can see we got 0, 1 and whatever number you provide. So if you provide 10, it will give you a first 10 Fibonacci numbers, right? Uh, in fact, let me just expand this so that you can see all the numbers. Okay, so you can see we got first 10 Fibonacci numbers. In fact, you can do it for 100 or whatever number you want. In fact, you can also do one more. So what if someone says uh, the value is minus 3? Now in this case, if you are saying you don't want to do that, it should be invalid, right? Uh, so you can see you're still getting two. We don't want that. So this is your assignment. If anyone enters any number below zero, you should check that first if the number is negative and then only you should be doing all the other processing. Uh, so that will be assignment. Uh, if you complete that in the comment section, do that, mention your answer. That's what you can do. Okay, that's how you do Fibonacci in Python. Okay, so we have some more modification here. So what we are asking from the user is the total number of Fibonacci number you want to see. But what if you don't ask for the total numbers? You want to ask for the number 100. Let's say if I say 100 now, you will get first 100 Fibonacci numbers. We don't want that. What we want is I want to print the last number which should be less than 100. So next, this time, second assignment for you is if I say 100, it is not the number of Fibonacci numbers we want, we want the last number should be less than 100. So that means it should end at 89. That will be your assignment. So that's about Fibonacci in Python. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.